Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having an unbelievable day. Uh, as for me, uh, got my day started a little while ago and uh, making some moves. Got some uh, errands to run, some honeydews. If you're not a married man, you don't know what that is, but got some honeydews on my agenda. Um, spent some time with my grandson, uh, which will be mandated by him and orchestrated by him and fully acceptable. Um, one of the bright spots of my day. Um, now, uh, before I forget, uh, we are still doing the Black Wealth series. Uh, had to take some time off to actually do some writing. Uh, like I say, it's just one me, and a lot of this stuff is being done by me, but we're working on changing that so that we can expand what we're doing with Rick Wallace Enterprises. Um, so, on that note, I uh, just wanted to let you know that we're still doing the Black Wealth series, and for those who don't know what that's about, uh, I'm literally right now writing book number 25. And in writing book number 25, uh, it's special for a number of reasons. Number one, it's special because we're talking about developing and building black wealth in the black community. Uh, number two, we're, it, it's special because it's my 25th book. Uh, and I think no matter what way you measure that, uh, by what standards you measure it, I think to be able to write and publish 25 books in a time, uh, you know, when book number one uh, was at the threat of not being published because nobody thought people would buy it. Uh, they thought it was well written. Talking about publishers, they thought it was well written. Uh, they thought that it was uh, well researched uh, and that it was valid, but they didn't think enough people would buy it to make it a worthwhile investment. And so there we were with the first challenge of my writing career. Well, at least as a a, a book writer. I had been writing for a while before that. But anyway, long story short, we get that published. Uh, I create my own publishing company and I'm off and running. And here I am years later, book number 25 on deck. Um, and before I forget that we are doing a sponsorship program for book number 25, where you can literally sit down and uh, sponsor space in the book. Um, there's no minimum sponsorship, but what you do with the space is what I love about it. You get to pay tribute to someone that has had an impact in your life, whether it's your mom, your dad, your grandma, your grandfather, uh, your first grade teacher, your football coach, basketball coach, volleyball coach, uh, business mentor. Uh, maybe it's something that you've done that you want to celebrate that uh, maybe at some point you didn't even think you were going to be able to get done. Um, and so you'd be able to sponsor that. The link to sponsor uh, space in the book is going to be in the description box of this video. Just go down and you can see how you can sponsor. Again, there's no minimum amount. If you sponsor it, your name goes in the book. I'll email you and ask you what you want to write underneath your name, uh, who you want to uh, sponsor, and you get to put it in your words. Uh, if you sponsor $25 or more, you get to put your name in the book and you get to you get the book, a signed copy of the book. If you sponsor $100 or more, you get all of that, plus you get your own dedicated page through which you can do your sponsorship. And if you do $250 or more, you get your dedicated page, everything else, and you get uh, to submit a picture of the person that you are uh, sponsoring or memorializing or uh, however you want to play tribute to, basically. So that's that. So don't forget to uh, do your sponsorship again. There's no minimum amount, so it's not like, you know, saying, okay, I'm, I'm reaching as deep into your pocket as I possibly can. No, I'm saying no matter what you do, I'm going to partner with you 
uh, whatever you're comfortable with, with whatever you believe uh, it's worthy of. And we're gonna do this together and you get to memorialize someone in the process. Um, that's what I'm saying. On that note, I'm out. Uh, on the reason I'm actually here, the reason I'm actually here is actually really simple. I need to go a different way. I'll turn around in a minute. Um, the reason I'm here is to talk about the propaganda machine and its effectiveness in the black community. And, you know, I'll start out with this because there's this big argument going on about it's just entertainment. Uh, they, this person did it this long ago and you know and nobody made a big uh, you know uh, fuss about it when so and so did it blah 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 and, and so many other things and um, when I think about propaganda and the years I've spent studying it and its effectiveness and how it's been used over and over again uh, to move the masses and when I say move the masses I'm not simply talking about black people I'm talking about moving the masses period everybody is under the spell of propaganda in their own enclave in their own situation in their own system it just impacts people differently depending on the message <clears throat> they're getting and how protrusive or pervasive the message is in their particular community well when you start talking about um Propaganda. I think about uh, the old saying that the, the uh, greatest trick that the devil, devil ever pulled off was convincing people that he didn't exist. Now, I'm not here to argue the existence of the devil. That's not what I meant. What I do mean is I think the greatest trick that uh, or the greatest accomplishment of propaganda is convincing the masses that it's not effective. It doesn't work. Uh, that the people who talk about it consistently are uh, conspiracy theorists and uh, really don't have a clue of what they're talking about. I mean, you don't have to really dig that deep to gain a true understanding of propaganda and how it works. First and foremost, read the book Propaganda by Edward Bernays. It's an old book, but it's powerful. It shows how uh, the media is used to control how people think. If you control how people think, you also control what people do. It's that simple. Uh, I'll ask you a question. If propaganda didn't work, if what you see in the media had no effect on your behavior, would companies spend $5 million for a 30 second slot, slot on Super Bowl Sunday. And the reason that Super Bowl Sunday is the biggest advertising day of the year is because it's the biggest television event around the world. It's the most watched event every year. And it's also the place where people will show up and pay $5 million for a 30-second 30, 30 slot because they know people are gonna show up. They put their best foot forward. They put their uh, best ad um, execs on it. They put their best um, creators on it. And they come up with all these great things because they know that the emotion, love, emotional level that people are at during the Super Bowl uh, and the fact that a lot of them will be inebriated makes them highly suggestive and highly imprintable. The more emotional you are, the more things stick in your brain. I, I, I'm, I'm saying that as lay as I possibly can. Uh, there's a whole technical science behind it. But basically, you remember more the more emotional you are. That's why tra traumatic experiences stick. Well, the same thing works for propaganda. Okay, the other side is the more inebriated you are, the more your brain is able to resist any type of suggestion or stimuli. Matter of fact, you tend to find it funny. Uh, whether you find it funny, whether you find it uh, uh, offensive, whether you find it uh, new, uh, neutral, uh, the bottom line is it's making an imprint. Uh, now, how emphatic the imprint is depends on the person, depends on the person's experience, convictions, and whatever. But consistent exposure of the same suggestion can happen in multiple ways. It doesn't happen with the same commercial. It happens in multiple ways. The one of the reasons that McDonald's is still the number one fast food restaurant in the world and has the worst food you can ever possibly eat is because they have been effective over the years in the use of propaganda. So you have to be willing 
to understand it at that level. And I said all of that to say this. Here we are again talking about this this kid, Lil Nas X, who's now uh, symbolically representing the birth of his next album project or release, whatever, by posing as if he's pregnant. I mean, an open stomach, open belly pr pregnancy where you can literally see the whole thing presented in a feminine sense as he always does. Um, and everybody's, you know, and the first thing everybody goes back to is the movie where the white man was pregnant when Arnold Schwarzenegger and okay, you took one of the most physiqued persons uh, as recognized uh, back, I think it was early nineties. Uh, I think the name of the movie was Junior and he was pregnant or whatever. Um, and so why wasn't it a big deal then? Well, as far as I'm concerned, it wasn't a big deal to me because it was a white person. Uh, it wasn't a big deal to me because their entire reality is different than ours. They don't have a shortage of men in the way that we do. They don't, they can literally afford that to happen. They can afford to give up men to the LGBTQ community just simply on numbers. And their economic, political, and socioeconomic positioning. It doesn't impact in the same way. If you got two nihilators and another the, another person that is opposing you has a hundred nihilators and someone someone came came up with a, a grift that's gonna take one of your uh, at least one nihilator from each, who's gonna be hurt? by the grift the most. The person with one annihilated. White people have proven a long time ago they're really willing to sacrifice some of theirs to get as many of ours as they possibly can. Uh, that is a part of their strategy. So that's the thing that you look at. But anyway, he poses this way. And I have been writing on this because it has been one of the most consistent uh, machinations of a white caste system uh, that I've seen in my life and that is the move and the push and the effort to not only emasculate black men but to feminize the black male image when I say feminize the black male image I'm not talking about homosexuality I'm not talking about people who are gay up here I'm talking about taking a straight heterosexual man and feminizing him that's why you see your actors in dresses because, uh, and then, well, you know, it's been white man being dressed. We just had that conversation, right? It's not impacting them the same. Their numbers are different. What they are in position and power is different. Losing a white man to the to that particular ploy is not going to be the same as losing a black man to each, uh, uh, you know, uh, relative uh, situ situation or, or, or race. And so my whole thing is we have to see it for what it is and we have to counter it. This is where new black media comes in. And I am uh, more than excited to be a part of alt black media. Uh, the brainchild of my friend and partner, uh, Neota Ur, uh, unbelievable mind, unbelievable historian, uh, unbelievable thinker. And we have, you know, had many discussions. We've sit down in many and you know, Neota was a believer in me before I knew who Neota was, which was impressive. A friend of mine told me, man, uh, Neota is uh, syndicating your work. And I'm like, who is Neota? And then we got to know each other. Uh, we got to connect and we got to having conversations, uh, pl plotting and uh, planning and developing and going. And Alt Black Media has made leaps and bounds, but there's so much more that needs to be done. Um, and we're gonna be coming to you. Uh, the thing that I'm doing right now is I'm bringing back the Black Voice radio show podcast. Uh, we have a YouTube channel where I come on and you know, and I, I was telling my old uh, co-host, Michael Jordan, I'm like, bruh, this dialogue, I mean, this uh, monologue stuff is for the birds. You know, I'll keep doing it because I have a lot to teach and you know, and you know, lecturing is what I do. But I would love to have that chemistry and work with people. So actually, I have two shows coming. Uh, the Black Voice Radio Show is coming back, and it's coming back as the as the Black Voice Reloaded. Uh, it's going to be on Thursdays at 11 a.m. CS, I mean CST. And then my 
a good friend and colleague, Dr. Michael Blanchard, is going to be doing a show every um, Saturday morning, if I'm not mistaken, at 9 a.m., starting this coming Saturday at 9 a.m. We haven't yet uh, named the show. Uh, we're still working with Creative to do that, uh, but that's coming. But we need way more. We're going to have to offset the propaganda. And the only way you offset it is you have to literally have uh, an abundance of stimuli that offsets the message, the narrative, the proposal, uh, the hypothesis, or whatever's being presented to the mind as reality uh, via a uh, subliminal message uh, and, and propaganda. We have to be offsetting it with direct messaging, with subliminal messaging, with just constant narrative change. Uh, that supports what we really need to know and understand about ourselves versus what they want us to see in ourselves. Uh, and that's so important. But yeah, this cat has his own personal agenda and he's being used right now. He doesn't realize that, but in time he'll learn that he was just uh, another instrument in this, in this ongoing race that was used for them to achieve what they wanted to. He'll get some of what he wants, but he's gonna find out that probably more than likely the LGBTQ community will turn on him as well as his white handlers who are financing what he's doing. Uh, but in the meantime, we've gotta be careful because he's just one element and component of a much larger situation. We're not just talking about the feminization of the black male image. We're talking about media being used to dumb down our, our teens and our young adults um, in the way of money, in, in the way of what's important. Uh, everybody is aspiring to be an Instagram influencer now instead of aspiring to be a business owner, being an attorney that can represent the interests of black people, being accountants that can represent the interests of black people, all of which, if done right and, and, and with a plan, can grow into a very lucrative business uh, and be sustainable over a long period of time. Uh, they're going for flash in the pans that have no uh, longevity and have no real true credibility. Um, not taking any shots against any Insta, uh, Instagram influencers or YouTube influencers or whatever, because I operate in that space. But you gotta understand that your space is created uh, and based upon what you're bringing to the table and who you're bringing it to. If all you're bringing is, look how cute I am, look how scantily clad I can be dressed, look at the dumb stuff I can say, look at how I can rap about drugs, how I can rap about murdering my own brother, look at how I can rap uh, about disrespecting my sister, look at how I can rap about robbing and killing and getting high. All of things that are going to end you up in places that you don't want to be. You definitely don't want your children and your grandchildren that, but but they paid you to rap about it. They've given you money that you probably will never see in any other way because nobody's taught you about all the other ways that you can actually build and support yourself. So you see drug dealing, athletics, and uh, entertainment is the only way out of the hood. And you're going to get that by any way ne necessary because your thing is you're securing the bag at whatever cost securing the bag comes at. That's the thing that we've got to do a better job at. That's the thing that we've got to work on. So I'm coming to you this morning to say, hey, look, get behind alt black media, get behind new black media, period. Whether they're part of all black media or not, get behind those people who are actually bringing substantive uh, content that provides growth, that provides direction, that provides instruction, that provides encouragement, uh, those are the ones you should be getting behind. Um, and on that note, I'm going to get ready to get up here. Don't forget, if you haven't sponsored my my 25th book, which is The Black Wealth Project, uh, definitely click that link and go ahead and do that. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day.